let's dive right in. Today we're going to be looking at how to quickly create a mesh of fibers. Go ahead, come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure you have Add Curve Extra Objects enabled. From there, exit this menu, and then choose a mesh object in your scene that is 3D. It cannot be a plane or a circle, it does actually have to be a 3D object. And for the example, we're going to use the default cube. So simply left click to select, Shift A, Add Curve, come all the way down to Knots, and we're going to choose Bounce Spline. If I were to hit Z now and come to wireframe and zoom in, you can see I've effectively generated a spline or a curve that is wrapping through this object. If I open the submenu here, you'll see a number of extra options, and we'll start by just doubling the number of bounces to 2000, effectively increasing the density. I can also adjust values such as the noise, offset, and random seeds to get various different looks pretty quickly. Offset is worth noting because if you bring it above zero, it will expand beyond the mesh, and if you bring it under zero, it will contract into the mesh, though this usually has a number of aberrant curves that will stick beyond the edges. Because this is a curve as well, you have a number of extra options for beveling it or creating essentially a tube around the actual spline. The resolution settings here and the bevel radius extrude is randomized, etc., are all available when you exit this menu, so we're going to simply click anywhere on the screen, hide our cube, come back into solid view, and if I grab this mesh or bounce spline, I can come to the object data properties, open geometry, and then I can simply adjust the depth here. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag just a little bit, and you can see I've now created essentially a pile of mesh wires. Unfortunately, there is no clean way to prevent them from intersecting, but for a distant shot such as a TOC or in a figure for a paper, you're not particularly going to notice. One thing worth noting, however, is that you might want to adjust some of the resolution. So by default, it starts at 12. If I drop this to two, you can see now these are quite a bit more angular. Usually I find 24 is going to give me something sufficiently smooth. For the bevel resolution itself, which is actually the resolution of the tube, you can increase this value to two or three. Two is going to be pretty sufficient for most cases. Again, you want to be careful when you're adding extra resolution because this will add quite a bit of geometry to your scene. I strongly recommend against adding subdivision surface to this or it will likely crash Blender. Now, the value of this is that you can apply it to essentially any object as a mesh. So I'm going to quickly set up a few examples and then come back to them. In this example, you can see we have a very simple plane curving up and you might want to add a layer of fibers on top of it. The easiest way to do this is by following the steps that we just discussed. So you'll note that even though this is a plane, I've extruded it to give it some thickness into three dimensions. I'll then select it, hit Shift A, come to Curve, Knots, Bounce Spline once again, and I'll make sure the offset in this case is actually zero. If we come to the wireframe, you can then see that I have the interior mesh. I'll bring the bevel radius up, this time in the main menu. Something quite small should be fine, so let's go with 0 0.0025. And now, because this is an independent object, I can simply come back into solid view and I can drag it above the actual plane itself. Now, if you notice that you have, let's call them rogue stretches, such as this little strand up here. The easiest way to identify these, because there are so many points here, is to select the whole thing, tab into edit mode, hit A to select everything, and anytime you see one of these handles that is sticking far out compared to the others, that is usually connected to one of these. So if I grab this one right here, and then just drag it back in, making sure to turn off the proportional editing I had before, drag it back in along the x-axis, you can see that that's tamed it just a little bit. And you'll have to do the same thing with some of the other points just to clean it up just the tiniest bit. Something like that would be fine. And now it's locked into the rest of the mesh. And you can see I have a few other pieces that are doing the same thing. I would identify them the same way. A to select everything, and just note that one of them is farther than the rest. Bring it in, something like that, and now it's cleaned up pretty nicely. Now one of the nice things about this is that I've now created a pretty complex mesh on top of this object. So if this were a stack of different layers, I'd be able to have my fiber mesh layer on top of my base layer, and I could obviously duplicate this as well and create another layer sandwiching the two. So you could have some sort of separator for, for instance, a battery or you could have some sort of complicated mesh polymer layer if you are working with some sort of filtration system. Another toggle that's worth discussing is actually in the options for the object data properties. If I want, I can animate the mesh growing in place. So I can take the bevel down to zero, right click and insert a keyframe. 
I'll jump ahead a certain number of frames, in this case 72, and I'll bring that bevel depth up to the final value that I want for the size. So let's say in this case 0 0.004. Then I'll right click, insert keyframe again, and you can see if I take the animation all the way back to zero and press play, it will now grow in. The curve object that you see at zero, this right here, will not actually show up in any renders, so if you went ahead and rendered this as an animation, all you would see is this growing into place. And that can be useful depending on what kind of message you're trying to convey. One final example that's a little bit more artistic than it is practical is applying bounce blinds to larger structures such as proteins. In this case, because of how the bounce blind is actually working, it likely will not propagate along the whole length. This is a little too big, so you'd have to segment this and do it in separate parts. If we go ahead, select our protein, hit Shift A, and again, come to Curve, Knots, Bounce Blind, you can see that for starters, we only managed to isolate this area. We could, of course, increase the number of bounces to try and get either higher density or greater coverage, and we can offset things such as the angular noise to make it move a little bit further along. Again, we still have all the same controls over aspects such as offset, bevel, radius, etc. And if we drag this up just a little bit to about there, and then come back to solid view and hide the original protein, we now have a sort of interesting fiber mesh outline of the original structure. So if this is sort of an aesthetic look that you're after for some sort of artistic purpose, this may be of interest to you. That being said, the main application of this in my mind is for creation very quickly of polymer networks or separators or schematic diagrams of that sort perfect for paper figures or even journal TOCs. And with that, as always, thank you for coming out. Thank you to my existing patrons for their ongoing support. And if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, supporting me on Patreon. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.